Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. Leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing, it helps out the channel immensely. I was uh, laughing at the comments where people were saying that the first thing that I needed yesterday was some coffee. No, I was just annoyed. I didn't have the microphone stand. It didn't make any sense. It's, it's a very long story. Something else was attached to it. I tried to remove it. I couldn't do it. So for the entirety of yesterday's video, I was holding the microphone in my hand. And it was just not very fun. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Oh, also, a very big thank you to everyone who left a like a nice comment. And also a nice comment on Twitter as well. I did see all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't respond back to everyone because it is a lot of comments, but I do thank all of you. And now without that ado, let's uh, move on. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin's price has dropped almost 1%. That's a lot. After a mini market-wide sell-off, no, the people are more dramatic than they actually need to be. So the wider cryptocurrency market is roughly down anywhere from half of a percent to one and a half percent. There are some coins that have less liquidity that are roughly down by around two percent. I'm, you, I mean, we've been going through this for for a year and a half. Can you guess why the cryptocurrency market went down by only one percent? Someone said it. It's because of the stock market. Yeah, stocks around the world uh, also dipped uh, closing time yesterday roughly around 1%. The cryptocurrency markets right now are actually trying to move back up. I think people were just looking for something more dramatic as to whatever. And even more so, like us going down, even if we had gone down by 2 to 3%, uh, would have been totally fine. We've been moving up consistently since the very beginning of the year. Uh, any low pullbacks and or sideways trending market movements are actually completely fine because most coins have gone up by like 30, 40, 70% over the course of 30 or so days. However, that 1% movement down has not deterred people at all. It says a Bitcoin explosion to $1 million is now on the table. This was said by Plan B, the popularly impopular, infamous person. Pers yeah, a person. <laughs> I was like, computer? No, definitely a person. Uh, who is famous for his stock to flow ratio and talking about how high Bitcoin's price is going to be back in 2021. Uh, we did not hit a $100,000 Bitcoin, and a lot of people were a bit annoyed that his magical chart with numbers and lines on it didn't come true. But now, uh, he's talking about that the chart has been reactivated, it got us a, a, a senju bean? Sensei bean. It, it, it's eating something, and if Bitcoin continues to move up in this way, at least until the middle of, of February... Uh, this will let him know that by the end of this year, we might hit a $100,000 Bitcoin. And then by the time we get to 2025, uh, he thinks that we could actually see a $1 million Bitcoin. But this is all once again contingent on uh, Bitcoin still moving up over the course of this year. And also end of the year, $100,000 Bitcoin. This is major news because it has the words Bitcoin and $1 million next to it. So a lot of people are going to be interested in it. it uh, okay. It says Bitcoin's seventh golden cross in 10 years nears. What this means for the price of Bitcoin, it means if we pass the golden cross, it'll go up. If it doesn't pass the golden cross, we go down. That's usually the name of the game for this. A lot of people are obsessed with the term golden cross. I think because it sounds like it means money and something uh, crossing a threshold, I wish I could actually tell you. Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, Bitcoin's other Golden Cross momentous event is going to take place. A lot of people are very excited. A lot of people are looking at uh, where Bitcoin has to go to be able to re 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 confirm that we are definitely in a bull market. Not the fact that people were calling for a $2,000 Bitcoin and we're not at $2,000. No, but it's this new event. That's going to definitely confirm where we are. 
It says Bitcoin's price to enter a new bull market if Bitcoin trades above this level. It's $25,000. Surprise. You didn't don't even have to go through the article. Uh, the idea is that uh, Bitcoin looks very strong. Uh, remember the news that we had? It was the end of last month. It was that if Bitcoin uh, passes by or hovers around between 25000 to 30000 US dollars, we are definitely back on the bull run and everything is kind of honky-dory from there. Uh, we're not very far. It just takes, I mean, three and a half really good days of the stock market moving up and Bitcoin can easily hit $26,400 and, you know, see where we go from there. But 25000 seems to be the number that I'm seeing from people who are saying that they're analysts out there as to where Bitcoin actually has to go. It says on-chain analyst Willy Woo, he's very popular, he's always in the Willy Woo crypto news, says institutional investors are quietly allocating to Bitcoin, sparking Bitcoin rallies. Willy Woo has apparently looked through his charts and he believes that, and I mean, it's not even a belief, like you can see the numbers. Uh, he says that the largest allocations of altcoins uh, and stable coins, more so, uh, being traded and moved into Bitcoin's price, once again, mainly stable coins, uh, is happening during institutional hours. He was looking at the charts and looking where the largest funds and firms were coming from. And it, as, as time in Asia was, you know, not, you know, the, the, the normal nine to five working hours, uh, Bitcoin's price was moving higher in Asia and then slowed down once people left work. And then by the time the European markets opened up, more money was being pushed into Bitcoin also during working hours. He said the exact same thing is happening for U.S. markets as well, and I assume, my assumption is that it's happening largely from the companies who are telling everyone else not to get into the market. You might have noticed the dramatic uptick in the amount of uh, rich people who are constantly screaming and clamoring uh, that Bitcoin's evil, Bitcoin's terrible, don't get into Bitcoin. And it's, 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 it's a tale as old as time, and it's a very boring one that we've been having for, it's almost six, seven years at this point where institutions tell us for about a year and a half, two years, Bitcoin's terrible, Bitcoin's horrible, the cryptocurrency space is a farce, no one should be getting into it. And remember how we always have that news where it's like a good seven month period where every single day there's a new billionaire being like, oh no, we've been buying, we, we've been buying Bitcoin for years. It's incredible. We have a huge amount. And then you realize that he was one of the people who was lying to you and your friends and your family telling them not to get into cryptocurrency so that they could buy more at a lower price. That's roughly... All the price news, there wasn't a gigantic amount of it. Usually if prices are going up, there's a lot more hypey news as to where prices are going to go. And I mean, listen, the, 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 the Bitcoin's price going down by 1% and us getting news of a soon to be $1 million Bitcoin, that's still pretty uh, hypey, if you will. Uh, that's all the price news. Uh, prices are lightly down. If you look at the charts, they're like ticking their way back up. I guess the main thing will be once U.S. stock markets uh, open back up, we should be able to see where we go. Is today Friday? Happy Friday, everyone. Yeah, it definitely is Friday. And without further ado, uh, let's move on. This is the most popular news story of the day, and I'm going to tell you why it is the dumbest thing. Uh, it belongs in stupid news, and none of you should actually pay attention to this. I'm bringing this to your attention because the odds are is that you probably watch other cryptocurrency YouTube channels as well. What? You're not just watching me? That's crazy. And they're probably going to bring you this news and not understand it themselves, and then they're going to tell you something. You're going to believe something that isn't actually real. I will explain. A new report by the Wall Street Journal brought to light some interesting facts and numbers related to the issue of the world's largest stablecoin, Tether. Tether issued USDT is arguably the most popular stablecoin. Not arguably, it is. It's the number three coin in the crypto market. Its market capitalization paired with the reserves posted by the issuer have helped it to weather the crypto winter by securing the confidence of investors. Tether's popularity played a significant role in easing the concerns of investors during the numerous controversies that the Tether issuer faced over the past years. All that news came from 
in 2017, the idea of a bad tether or tether not having money came from Bitcoin maximalists. The idea was that there was another form of cryptocurrency, and I and I and I did even uh, and I reel in the term cryptocurrencies. There was another coin on the market that was gaining a large amount of popularity that directly mimicked the U.S. dollar within the crypto space for the first time ever. A lot of the stuff that you've heard about other coins and how bad they are and how terrible, while most of the coins are actual garbage, uh, are originally from people who only wanted Bitcoin to be a coin back from 2017. Everything that we've heard, negative, bad, terrible, uh, controversially about Tether has not been true. I've been telling all of you this since 2019, 20, 21, because it became a huge topic of discussion where people were like, what happens if Tether so-and-so? And I told all of you, I would like to believe at least if Tether is fake, one, they've done an incredibly good job, uh, and two, it would not be listed on Kraken, Binance, Gemini, Coinbase, you name it. Tether would not be there. Someone would have looked into their finances and said, hey, you are the largest stablecoin. Something is wrong. We're going to delist you. As that has not happened at any given point, especially after the FTX fiasco, we can all assume that Tether is real despite the numerous amount of news that continues to come forth uh, from very few news publications as to something wrong being, uh, something being wrong with Tether. Uh, part of the problem is, for those of you who didn't get it, this is a news article from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the Wall Street Journal has been quite adamant for a number of years that something is wrong with Tether. It's really weird because it's just the Wall Street Journal uh, that's actually doing this. And I would even probably, hear me out here, go so far as to say uh, the people behind the Wall Street Journal and or the people who own the Wall Street Journal uh, probably have a huge amount of Bitcoin and have no vested interest in Tether in any sort of way. And this is why they've been actively trying to make it go down or to disappear because they're probably in cahoots with a bunch of other people who are also trying to make their own stablecoin. Don't believe me? Remember over the last couple of years, I think it was even 2020 and 2021. I think at one of those years, we heard about 35 new stablecoins that were being released and they were from these huge companies and huge institutions who were working with Amazon, who were working with so-and-so people looked through all their paperwork and they were working with some of the largest companies on the planet. And they were all like, something wrong with Tether. You should use ours because we're backed by so-and-so. We're incredible. And you realize they've all disappeared because they're actually all garbage. None of them had any proper backing or they only had maybe a few million dollars. Anyway, the point is I find it really weird that it's just the Wall Street Journal who's constantly bringing this news to light and how terrible everything actually is. If you continue reading further, even on this article, the, the main controversy as it stands is that Tether is centralized. Can anyone tell me why this isn't news? Because Tether has never claimed to be decentralized. The people from Tether have put their coin on multiple other chains. It is now running on Tron. I think some of it is on Bitcoin, it's on Ether, some of it's on Polygon, some of it's on Cardano, you name it, I think it's across like 12 different chains. That, in essence, does not actually equal decentralization. It's more of a placing your bets to make sure that your coin should survive should any of the other coins ends up going down. It's just complete logic. It's what any company would do to spread some of their money around. Um, remember, we had news weeks ago that there was a gigantic, once again, controversy with Tether and you should stay away from it. And I made sure in a video to tell you that the controversy wasn't actually a controversy. It was a lawsuit from the Department of Justice from the United States from back in 2018 looking into Tether's paperwork and they weren't content with it because Tether didn't uh, sign up with them or write them a note or give them you know, a pat on the back and say happy birthday or whatever the case might have been. So it was the conclusion of that lawsuit from 2018 that everyone's now talking about. And the Wall Street Journal looked through all the paperwork from the lawsuit, from the, you know, the bad times in the long, long ago. And all that they could actually find was that four... Now, think about this. The US DOJ, the Department of Justice, for years and years looked into Tether's finances. They looked into their this, they looked into their that, they looked into everything that could have been wrong with Tether. And the worst thing that the Wall Street Journal found from all of this documentation was that there were four, four people, one, two, three, four people who controlled 86% of all the tether out there. Can anyone can, you know, tell me why this isn't news? Because one, cool, 
Tether's a company. We know that they're a company. Tether's not a cryptocurrency. It's not decentralized. We know that Tether was created by people in a non-decentralized manner. Tether is a company. They have never claimed that they are a decentralized entity like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, like XRP, like Cardano. You can go down the list. Think of that. Five years of an investigation, the Wall Street Journal looks through their paperwork, and the worst that they found was that four people controlled 86% of the tether. Even more so, those four people did not cash out hundreds of billions of dollars worth of tether onto the market, therefore crashing the coin and rug pulling. They did not do this. So what's the news? The news is that the Wall Street Journal is probably working with some other company who's trying to create their own stablecoin, but Tether continuously remains as the top stablecoin, and they're probably angry at it. This, is, this was the most popular news story of the day. This was everywhere. Everyone's talking about it. I can't believe that Tether was only controlled by four people. How can they have so much money? Why were they doing that? It's, it's some form of, of manipulation. It's not. They're a company. Remember when we had the sit-down discussion together and I was like, do you understand why Coinbase can freeze your account? It's because they're a company. They're, they're centralized. They can do what they want, how they want, when they want. Remember when we were talking about that other, wh what was it? It wasn't Celsius. M maybe it was Celsius. I don't know. The one who was just in the news about four weeks ago where the judge ruled that all the money that was on their website is, is technically theirs. And then when you read through the fine print, I, I just heard someone clutch their pearls. When you read through the fine print of their website, it said any money that lands onto our crypto exchange is by default ours. So when they went belly up and they, you know, closed down the website and basically shut everything off, uh, people were like, hey, give us our billions of dollars back. And they were like, no, read the fine print. This money is ours. You know why they can do that? Because they're a centralized entity. Not that it's right, but they are legally within their right to be able to do so. And this is why I always talk about following coins and projects that are actually decentralized or making sure that you don't have all your money on a cryptocurrency exchange. You know, I'm, I'm saying all these things because they have, they have a literal purpose. It says $68 billion of Tether's market was controlled by four individuals as of 2018. Wow, you know what's really crazy? And the part that I always find that no one actually talks about because we've also gone over this stuff. This is not the first time that we've been here. This is, this is not the first time we walk down this road together, and I've had to have this conversation with you. Does anyone remember back in 2018 where I was also screaming at the screen, and I was like, whoa, this is also a really big problem, and no one actually cared? For those of you not looking at the screen, it says a report has linked that 74% of Bitcoin's mining power is just in China. This is from the 10th of October, 2018. It's really weird that Tether is the most popular news story of the day. Think of that. The U.S. Department of Justice looked into everything from Tether. The people from the Wall Street Journal, the most evil thing that they found was that in 2018, five years ago, five pe four people controlled the majority of Tether. However, back in 2018, when we heard that Bitcoin's mining was mainly controlled by China and they could have had a 51% attack at any time, people were like, eh, it's fine, it's fine, it'll work itself out. It's cool. Don't pay any attention to it because people, I don't know if it's that, that people don't want to pay attention to real news or if they get uh, more energy from things that are distractions to them. Like, why is everyone talking about the Tether thing today? Why was everyone so obsessed with Sam Bankman-Fried? You remember? Yeah. Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX back in November when I was like, the, the exchange isn't that big. They're not Binance size. And everyone was digging up all this dirt. Like that was an actual distraction to other things that were really taking place within the cryptocurrency space that we ourselves as a community had to get under control, which still aren't under control because, you know, most people actually don't care. It says Ripple is sitting on close to $80 billion and could cash out hundreds of millions per month. But it isn't. This is an article from January 2018 where we found out that Ripple was holding between 55 billion and 60 billion XRP, roughly between 55 and 60 percent of all the XRP tokens. There are so many things that actually, you know, uh, we know what centralization looks like. When it's centralization from a um, a decentralized entity, that's when we should actually be having a discussion. Tether is a company. We know that they're a company. Tether has not claimed uh, to be the voice of the generation and or some type of a new Satoshi Nakamoto figure. 
They're, they're tether. They can do what they want with their money however they want. It's just that they are working within a decentralized frame. So you're supposed to be terrified that there were only four people controlling, controlling a vast majority stake. You know what you should be terrified of? For those of you who aren't looking at the screen, we also went over this news. According to Masari, the Dogecoin network is grappling with centralization. At a glance, there are over 4 million wallets that are holding Dogecoin. However, 95% of those wallets, 95% of 4 million wallets, they're each holding less than 1,000 tokens. You know what that means. There's one wallet. There are 4 million Dogecoin wallets. There is one wallet that controls 25% of Doge. How many people out there are about to sell their Doge because of centralization? Right, not one person answered at all. They found that the top 10 wallet addresses for Dogecoin control all of the Dogecoin. Why is no one talking about that? Why isn't the Wall Street Journal looking into the Dogecoin blockchain and figuring out that there are 25 people who control everything? No? No one out there? The top 10 Ethereum whale accounts own 21% of the total supply of Ether. I'm going to repeat that one more time. There are 10 addresses that control 21% of Ether. One out of every five coins is controlled by these people. It is estimated that we have roughly around 100 million addresses now for the, uh, what do you call it, for the Ethereum network. I think that was one of the numbers that was floating around out there. I'll give this to you a lot better. Take the entire population of the United States. Now imagine that there are 30 people out of all the people in the U.S. who control 21% of all the ether. That, yeah, see, that's what it basically would actually end up coming down to. This is news from 2021 for those of you who are missing it. And even a lot of the times, I've told you all before as well, like this isn't even a controversial topic. It's more of a, this is how finance works. I watch a documentary. You'll, you'll hear me say that forever because I love watching documentaries. And they were talking about the like wealth centralization within the United States. And it was this really weird, like they were talking about the levels of poverty, income poverty that the U.S. is currently experiencing. It's, it's absolutely insane what's happening there. But a lot of this has happened, A, on purpose, and because that's how the system is also set up the idea being they were they were going over the finances of the uh, the lowest income one percent if you will and the not even the highest one percent of the one percent it was people who are making over two hundred three hundred thousand dollars per year even as a, a a family or a couple living together and they found that the richer you are the more assets that you're going to buy you realize that you have money and therefore you want more it's kind of the same exact thing if you're in the cryptocurrency space and you have a you know half a bitcoin you have a couple dogecoin you have some ether and you see that the price has gone up, you're gonna to wanna to buy more. So you're actually buying more of the fragments of everything that are actually out there. You don't realize that you're taking huge portions of the pie every single time, you and all your friends and your family. But then on the other side of the coin, you have people who are not in the cryptocurrency space, who don't wanna be in the cryptocurrency space, who think that the cryptocurrency space is fake, or something's wrong with it, or it's a farce, or they listen to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger too many times and they hold no cryptocurrencies. So then what ends up happening is, is that as time goes on, when the prices of these things do skyrocket and we get to a $10,000, $15,000, dollars Ethereum, you and your friends and your family are holding fractions of that coin. And you have the other side of the coin with these people who have none of these assets at all. So over the course of a 14-year period, I'll even slam it down to a 10-year period, when we heard, I, I told you this story years ago. I had a friend, and bless his heart, because he was he was he was not happy uh, for a while. When Dogecoin first came out, he was ups he loved the idea of getting into this thing called Doggy Coin, which was what most people were calling it back then. And I think he had I think the number was around 100 million Doge. It was because it cost him nearly nothing. I, I think it was maybe two or three thousand dollars. The price of Doge, I mean, was you know this is the olden days. And he, he held onto the coins for a couple of months or something like that. I think he, we, the, it was popular back then to have a, like a paper wallet. Like there were websites where you could print out a QR code. And that was a way of storing your, 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 your coins. It was very odd. I think he gave a million Dogecoin to his mother and he kept the rest for himself. At some point he moved away and he sold all of the coins 
And I think he he hadn't heard from this guy in years. He called me one day and was like, uh, that was when Dogecoin was like 50, 60 cents. And he was like, have you have have you seen the market? He was panicking because I found out later he had sold his Dogecoin, all of it, when he was moving to another place because he needed some extra money for the rent. And he essentially gave away uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, how much million dollars. He called his mother and was like, hey, do you have that piece of paper that I gave you years ago? She threw it away weeks ago. I mean, not even weeks ago, weeks after he gave it to her because she didn't understand it. She, she, she thought it was a gift, which is, which is actually kind of shady if you think about it. You, you give your mother a gift, like, hold on to this. It's money. She goes, okay, and then just throws it away because she doesn't understand what's on the actual piece of paper. The, the entire point of all of this is, uh, over the course of that time, we have gone over the fact that these coins might at some point in the future be valuable. I remember having discussions with people back in 2014, 2015. I was like, I could totally see Dogecoin going to a dollar. There was some guy, he was arguing with me. I don't know what was going on in his life or his brain, and I frankly don't actually care. But now we see that all these things are possible. If, you, if, given, if given the chance, if you have 8 billion people, and you even slim that down further to 300 million people, there are going to mathematically be at least 10, 30, 40, 500, 5,000 people who are going to hear this could be worth something in the future and they're going to accumulate a large portion of it. The issue then comes into play years down the line when it actually is worth something and people look back and go, centralization, why do they have so much of it? It's because these people probably heard back in the day when Ethereum, Ethereum used to be 50 cents. People told me not to buy Ether because it was a garbage project. Think of how much Ether me I, TMI, could actually have if I hadn't listened to those people. But I listened because I was like, oh yeah, it, it, it must be another crappy coin. And this is why I try to... Anyway, the entire point is you're going to have centralization in crypto monetarily the same exact way that you're going to have it in normal finance. There are families who are going to listen to the fact that, hey, I'm 21. Let me start buying some stocks. Hey, my partner's also 21. I'm going to tell them to also buy some stocks. You have kids. You continuously buy stocks. By the time you're in your 40s and 50s, you own huge portions of these companies. You are making tons of money even just from dividends because you've been doing it for a long amount of time. You have someone who jumps into the stock market in 2020, 2021 because of Wall Street bets. And they go, well, that's not fair. The person across the street is super rich. Well, they've been doing it for a much longer time than you. Think of how long you've been into crypto. Think of the idea of us once one day getting to a million dollar Bitcoin. If you've been into crypto, that even if you just got in today, first time here, hello, welcome to the channel. And Bitcoin does make it in the next 30 years. In 30 years, how much richer you're going to be than someone who just enters the market on the first day of 30 years from now. That's kind of the way that it is. I mean, that's the most reasonable way to kind of look at it. There are people out there. My friend spent hundreds to get 100 million Dogecoin back in the day. How many other people were doing that? How many other people were putting in thousands every single month because they thought it was really cool to have something called Dogecoin or Doggy Coin? How many people back in the day were buying up tons of Ether when it was at 50 cents? How many people were buying Bitcoin at a dollar? Bitcoin had a dollar? It seems kind of expensive, but I'm going to try and buy a couple hundred and where they are right now. So the news is, is that um, centralized Tether did something centralized and people within the company were holding all the money. It's kind of like if you like look at a bank. Imagine being surprised that the five bankers who work at the bank are holding the most money from the bank. So when you hear this news from somewhere else, just uh, reference them this video because I found it incredible that after all those years of investigating, the worst that the worst that was found is that four people were holding tons of tether. Oh, e even better is that they didn't sell it off. Imagine the level of restraint you has you 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 have to have within you to essentially have hundreds of millions of billions of dollars that you could liquidate at any second and you don't. You could profit from that, but you chose not to. That's the um, Tether news. Take the news how you will. Okay. Let's move on. 
See, I told you I would explain everything to you. Also, in very popular news that people are trying to frame as something else, but it's it's not at all what you think. Binance has recently announced their participation in a sponsored virtual asset investigation course, or VAIC, organized by the Hong Kong Police Force, the HKPF, Cybersecurity and Technology Crime Bureau, CSTCB. There's too many letters. Just, just name something simpler. It, it looks crazy. Here's a tweet for it by, uh, right here from Binance. It says, in an ongoing effort to enhance our user protection worldwide, Binance brought law enforcement workshops to Hong Kong. Our team's investigations expert took part in a virtual asset investigation course that HKFP organized to bolster law enforcement against cybercrime within the city. So uh, from uh, uh, far away, this looks like some type of, how do I say this? Almost like a good guy kind of thing. Someone being like, oh, you know what? You're trying to make crypto good in your country. Let's help you out. However, when you step back, we had news about two weeks ago that apparently Hong Kong announced that they're going to try and become the crypto capital of the world. You can find the news, uh, which was quite surprising to me because the area to the north has typically been quite adamant and against cryptocurrencies. And if you have been paying attention to the news over the last three to four years, uh, what happens in the north uh, typically is taking place in Hong Kong as well. You can look it up. It's not me making up. They're doing something 15, 20 years too early, but alas, I digress. Uh, on top of that, the news that they're also trying to become the largest market within the cryptocurrency space, they also announced that they wanted huge amounts of regulation. Do you think it's random that Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange on the planet who has partnered with other countries, has shaken hands with kings and dictators and other things like that around the world, wouldn't have gone to Hong Kong to make sure that they are the first stop shop for the Hong Kong Police Force and Cybersecurity Technology Bureau to go to Binance first should they have any questions about this new industry that they're trying to get into. Do you think that Binance would have waited six months for Coinbase to try to enter Hong Kong? Or do you think that the people who actually speak Mandarin and Cantonese would have gone to the Hong Kong Police Force first to make sure that they were working with them? Yeah, see now, see, now it makes a lot more sense because a lot of the news floating around was like, this is a great thing done by Binance. Not that it's not a great thing, but this is being done for money. This will allow Binance to have a literal, uh, you know, uh, two feet, arms, legs, and their head through the doorway if Hong Kong's efforts to try and become a gigantic crypto hub actually do end up taking place. Who are they going, who, who are they going to contact and choose for information should something happen? Who are they going to give a licensing and registration to first in the country, if not Binance? Who then becomes the largest cryptocurrency exchange in Hong Kong? It's the one who was helping us out. Who gets the, the, the golden spoon, the silver plate, or whatever people are eating off of these days. So this was very big news. Anything, anything Binance-y ends up always making the news and people get quite excited and they go, wow, I can't believe it. No, Binance is huge. I think Binance is larger than any of us could begin to imagine. Like, I don't think people actually understand how wealthy Binance actually is. I will never get to, but I would love to look into their finances as far as like how many, like what they own asset wise. I think people were shocked when they, I, and, I, and I was like, why are you shocked about this? When uh, I think people were looking at Sam Bankman Freed's, uh, the, the houses that he owned, and I think he owned like a $7 million home in the Bahamas. I was like, did you think this billionaire was like living in a studio apartment, you know, counting roaches on the wall? Or do you think he spent some of his billions to buy a $7 million home? I wonder how, how, how much in assets Binance also owns. Like, if you get a chance... Uh, no, never mind. Never mind. It, it, it's, it's not that kind of video. Uh, there are. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you fall down the rabbit hole. There are countries and families uh, who own large portions of cities that you are living in right now. Uh, it does not make the news often, but when people have looked at documentation, uh, we have found out collectively as humans. Uh, that a lot of the world is actually just owned by roughly around 30 or so families. And I mean like entire cities. So uh, on that note, as Binance is one gigantic entity, I would not be surprised if they also own tons of real estate in Hong Kong, New York, London, Paris, and many other places. 
So that's the Binance news. Yeah, this was very popular, and I it it's just them helping out um, the police force. But you, we all know they're not doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. It's being done so that they can have uh, priority should things um, kick off. That's the Binance news, and yeah, let's move on. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Oh, and for and for everyone saying that I needed coffee, I I I can't drink coffee. It's really bad. Uh, not that I like physically am incapable of. Like I love the taste of coffee, but it gets me like for a good like seven hour period, my heart just kind of hums. Like it doesn't beat anymore. Like I get so energized and I can't nap. I can't do anything. So for those of you who didn't know, and I'm sure some of you do, all I drink is water and tea because I, you know, I can't uh, do anything caffeinated. And even like, I had green, oh my gosh, I had green, I had a, it was a Sencha green tea and a, and some Earl Grey the other day. And I couldn't fall asleep that night. I don't know what's, I, I have a very weird, thank you to all my Patreon supporters, Martin Steuer, Bodie McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, yeah, there we go, The Dealers Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay, Mobarazi, VB Nerd, 21, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Ternoster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman, High XRP, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Adam Graysig, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3 d Setsuna, Paxis, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who clicked l- link, like, <laughs> link. Uh, oh, yeah, who clicked like and is a clicker of affiliate links. I knew it made sense in some sort of way. Or who has subscribed at the moment. Bitcoin is down by 1.2%. You can see that it's trying to go back up. Ethereum is down by 1%. You can see that it's trying to go back up. Uh, anything crazy, abnormal? Polygon's down by 3 Whoa, okay. Uh, Shiba Inu is up by 3.7%. Polkadot is up by 39 Cosmos is up by one48 Ethereum Classic is up by 4% as well. No Ethereum Classic news. Good for them. Good job, Ethereum Classic. Uh, Aptos is down by 7%. ApeCoin is down by 4 Algorand's up by one3 Phantom is up by 6.1%. Terra Luna Classic is up by uh, 16%. One, two, it is two decimal places away from one cent. What a time to be alive. EOS is up by 1%. We haven't had EOS news since, I think, 1922 or something like that. Uh, Anything else crazy? Tezos is up by 4. That's about it. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, supporting. It is great having all of you here, and I will most certainly... Be talking to you all soon. See you.